Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Blender. And this time we're going to be looking at creating this Starling Murmuration. So we won't actually be creating these starlings because that's an element that I've pre-built for you and I'll give you a link to that and the other assets in the description. But we'll be diving deep into Blender's fascinating Boyd's particle simulation. So let's make a start. So here we are in a new project and the first thing I'm going to do is to set the end range to 750, otherwise I'm sure I'll forget. And then I'm going to delete that default cube. So the first thing I want to do is to add an emitter and for the emitter I'm going to use add mesh cylinder. Come over here, let's rotate it through 90 degrees on Y and let's set its radius to 3. And then what I'm going to do is come to edit mode, faces, select this face, select invert and then delete faces. So we're just left with this this front face or top face, whatever you want to call it. And let's rename this as emitter. And let's switch back to object mode. The other thing I want to do just as a bit of setup is to add a sky because it'll make it easier to understand what, what's going on. So what I'm going to do is add mesh plane. Let's rotate it through 90 degrees on X and let's move it on Y something like 40, so it's back in the background there, and set the size to 20. And then I'm also going to come over here to its scale and set that X value to 1.4. So with the sky selected, let's come over to shading. Let's click on new, and we want to add a new texture. So add texture, image texture, bring that in there. Open, navigate to our assets, and select the sky open image. Pipe that into the base color there, turn specular right down and roughness right up. And let's come back to layout mode. So I'm just going to move this emitter a little bit off to the side. Eventually I'm going to move it quite a lot off to the side to something like negative 10, I think, for the time being. And let's switch to material preview so we'll be able to see our sky in this instance. So let's also hide the camera and the light. Always a bit annoying to see those. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to link to the animated starling. So let's come to File and Link. In the Assets folder, there's something called Starling Blend. So if we select that and we click on Link, what we want is to link to a collection. So I'm going to double click the collection, select Starling Collection and Link. So as you can see, the collection includes three starlings and they all flap away at different speeds. And the advantage of that is it will make for greater variety within the final result. But you'll notice there's something slightly odd about the wings. That's because we're seeing the armature through the body. So let's just turn that off because we don't actually want to see that. So let's come up here to the viewport overlays and just disable bones there. And that goes away, makes, makes that a bit prettier. Now we don't actually need to see these little chaps. So let's turn off the viewport and the render buttons. So next we can come to our emitter and actually turn it into a particle system. So let's select it and come down to the particle tab here and click on the plus sign to add a new particle system. And you probably see if we look over here that we've got a bunch of balls that are falling off the emitter. But this is not what we want at all. However, let's just set up the emission first of all. So just to keep the tutorial moving, I'm going to just reduce that number down to 500, but at the end of the day, we'll crank that up to something like 2500, just so we've got a nice large flock. Then we'll set the frame start to negative 1000, and then the end to 1. So they'll all have been generated before the first frame of our animation. And let's set the lifetime up to 2000. So we need to swap out these little balls for our birds. So what we're going to do is come down to the render tab here, open that up, and instead of render as halo, we want to render as collection. 
and then from the instance collection menu here we can select that collection that we've linked to and you can hopefully now see that our strange blobs have actually turned into birds. What we're also going to do while we're here is reduce that scale down to 0 0.035 and let's also disable show emitter and also very importantly let's enable pick random and that will choose a different start point for the animation of each bird. The birds unfortunately now just fall down which is not what we want and the reason for that is that the physics is not the physics we want. So let's open up the physics tab here and you'll see that the default physics type is Newtonian and that's just basically gravity. What we're going to do is we're going to switch that over to Boyd's and this is where the magic comes in because Boyd's is like an intelligent particle system. The individual particles actually know what the other particles are doing and they can adopt some very clever behaviours that we're going to apply. Also while we're here let's reduce the mass of the birds. Let's go for 0.1. So what we need to do is open up the movement tab and set some basic values here. So what we're going to do is have a maximum airspeed of 16. The max air acceleration is going to be 0.3. The angular velocity is going to be 0.1 and an important one is air personal space and that is going to be 8 and that will make sure the birds avoid each other. So the really interesting bit is what we're going to do next and that is here at the bottom of this section here, the physics section, select the Boyd Brain tab. So open that up and this is where all the clever stuff comes in and the, the intelligent movement of these birds. So you'll see we've got two basic rules. So each of these is a rule about how the birds behave. We've got separate, which obviously makes the birds separate away from each other, and flock, which obviously makes them come back together again. And what we're going to add is a few more rules. So we can do that by clicking on the plus sign. And the first one I'm going to add is goal. Click on the plus sign again. I'm going to add average speed. And the last one is plus avoid collision. Now the order of these is actually rather important. So what we need to do is to move the flock down below average speed. So select the flock and using these arrows, we can move the order. So I'm just dropping it down below average speed and above avoid collision. So as you see, we've defined a goal, or rather we've, we've said that there's going to be a goal, but we haven't actually said what it is. You, the object here is empty and we need to make an object that is going to be the goal. So what we can do is come to add and just create a basic empty. So plain axes will do fine. And let's rename that as goal. So now we can come back to the birds, reselect the birds, come back to the particles, and down there where it says goal, in this object menu here, we're going to select that empty that we've just made that we called goal. So now if we come to the beginning, what we'll need to do is we'll need to reset the cache. So let's come to the cache and just try to persuade it to empty itself. It doesn't always want to, you've got to kind of bully it a bit. Okay, so that looks like it's emptied and they're back on the disk. So the goal uh, you can see is just here in the center and press play and you can see that the birds sort of head towards the goal and then go a bit crazy and they go, go extremely crazy. So we need to do quite a bit more work on setting this up, obviously. So let's come back to the beginning again. Again, let's do our best to clear the cache. In fact, right click reset to default value is probably the best way of doing it. So first of all, I'm going to move the emitter out a little bit further. So come over here and let's set that X location to negative 20. And then what I want to do is I want to animate the goal. Now the way we're going to do this, actually I'm going to disable the emitter so we can see the goal more clearly, just so disable the visibility of the emitter. Let's select the goal. And what we're going to do is we're going to add drivers to these positions. I'm just going to do the X to, to, for the time being. So I'm going to right click on the X and I'm going to do add driver. So let's click on this button here to delete the var, that's the variable, and delete the expression and let's type a new one. So this is the expression that we're going to use. Sin, which is S-I-N, open brackets, frame, which obviously is the frame count, divided by 36, because we want to slow the frame count down, 
close brackets, times, which is the asterisk symbol, 10, which is the amount that we want to multiply that sine wave. So a sine wave, as you know, is just negative one to plus one, and that's not gonna be big enough for us, but this is going to create a much larger sine wave. And you can see that's moving across from zero, It'll come back again, off to the other side. So that's our basic movement of our goal. And now we can turn back on the emitter and see what happens. So let's turn the emitter back on again. Make sure we're at frame one, come back down here to the cache and reset to default value. And if we press play, you can see that they're following that goal. They're doubled back there, following it from left to right as it oscillates. But we need to do a lot more work with the old Boyd brain. So let's come back down to the Boyd section. And let's first of all, just adjust that separate. And let's set the rule fuzziness to 0.9. Then the goal we've set up adequately as it is, and you can see that it's already got a rule fuzziness of 0.9. So the average speed rule fuzziness is good, but we need to change these three values here. So I'm going to go for a speed value of 0.85 a wander value of 0.5 and a level of 0.25. So if you're wondering what all these values mean, there is a way of finding out. If you hover over any of these labels, it actually tells you what they are. So you can see there, speed is percentage of maximum speed. Uh, wander is how fast a velocity's direction is randomized and so on. So let's carry on. Flock is good. Avoid collision is good, but what we want to do is we want to make sure that the Boyds don't collide with each other. So let's turn that on like so. And there's one more little thing I want to do, and that's come into this miscellaneous tab here. And I'm just going to reduce that pitch amount to 0.5. So now we're done with setting up our particle system. We can concentrate on refining this goal animation. So as you know, we applied a driver to the X location and we're going to do the same thing with the Y and Z. So right click on the Y, add driver. Again, let's just delete that var by clicking on that plus sign. And the value here is going to be one plus cos, which is cosine, open brackets, frame divided by 180. So this is going to be much slower. Close brackets, times, that's asterisk, 15. So that's our Y value. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the Z. Right click, add driver, let's delete the var. Let's delete this expression. And what we're going to have here is three plus cos, so cosine again, open brackets, frame, divided by 41, close brackets, times six. So the Z is going to move it up and down, and the Y is going to move it in and out. And the Y is going to bring it close to the camera over the course of the animation. So talking of the camera, let's just come and adjust it because it's not doing what we want it to do at the moment. So first of all, let's just reset the location by hovering over the location and hitting backspace. Sets all that to zero. Let's do the same thing for the rotation as well. So for these values, we want negative 50 on the Y location and 90 degrees on the X rotation. Let's look through the camera by hitting zero on the number pad. So obviously we need to scale up our sky background. So let's sort out that sky Really should have renamed that plane as Sky. Let's do that. Let's hit Control A in the viewport and all transforms. And then we can come over and scale it up. And let's just scale it up 3.5 on X and 3.5 on Z. So what I want to do with the camera is to get it to track the movement of the birds. And I can do that by applying a constraint. So reselect the camera and come down to the constraints properties here and let's add object and track two and obviously we've got something that they can track and that's the goal that we created for the birds so now you can see how the camera is kind of tracking around following the path now i'd prefer it not to follow quite so precisely and what we can do is we could just turn down the influence so let's turn it down to 0.2 and then it's going to be a much more sort of gentle drift around and that's just going to be a lot more satisfying i think 
So a couple of more things I need to do before we finish. Uh, I'm going to come back to the emitter and we want to hide this emitter from the viewport. So let's come back to the particle system. It's all the way down here under viewport display and we need to turn it off there. So let's just turn off show emitter. Uh, it's a little bit less annoying. Now, if I were to come over to the rendered display, you'll see that the whole scene is much too dark. And so we need to add some lights. So first of all, let's add a sun. So add light sun. I'm just going to set up its rotation 90 degrees on X and 45 degrees on Z. Come over to the lighting tab, bump up the strength a bit. I think five will do. And then let's give it a little bit of warmth, I think. Just not too much, just something like that. Makes it a little bit prettier. And then I'm going to select this scene's default point light. So let's set this position up. Let's go for 24 on X, 10 on Y, and negative 10 on Z. Let's come over here to the lighting and let's crank up the power. I think we need to go for something like 75 thousand watts and I just need to re-enable that in the viewport and again let's just make that really kind of nice and warm something like this. If there's only one thing we need to do obviously we need to make sure that these lights are not actually casting shadows so let's turn the shadows off for the point light there and we need to do the same thing for the sun so turn off the shadows. So then all that remains is to render the final output but obviously, do make sure, first of all, to crank up the number of uh, birds. Uh, so go for like 2,000, 2,500, nice large number. And obviously make sure that the cache is fully emptied and that you've then cached the entire animation before you proceed to the render. So for the render, I think Eevee is probably fine for the nature of this scene. And what I tend to like to do is to use PNGs, which means you can always resume if anything goes wrong, if Blender crashes or it's the frame you don't like or something like that. So make sure the frame range is also set to the full range of your animation. And then you can import that image sequence into the application of your choice. So in this instance, I used motion and it looks like this. So anyway, I hope that's been a useful tutorial. Thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again on the next one.